What does it mean to be a productive software engineer? I see a lot of folks obsessed about just writing more lines of code or pounding out more features, but that isn't really being productive because when all you care about is throughput, your quality goes out of the window. Ideally, you want to be effective and efficient. That is what being productive is. And there are two sides to that, a habitual side and a technical side. The habitual side, as the name suggests, are a set of core habits that set you up for success when it comes to being productive. And this does not necessarily have to do with coding, but how you live your life in general. And the technical side are things that help you become more effective from a software engineering standpoint. Each of these probably deserve to be a video on their own, and I may make those in the future. But for now, I will try to give you some tips from both the habitual and the technical standpoints to get you started on your journey to becoming a highly productive software engineer. Hi guys, my name is Utsav. I'm a software engineer based in Seattle, Washington, and this channel is all about helping you excel in your software engineering careers. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing. As usual, the reference materials from this video will be in the description below and I have timestamps, so feel free to jump to sections that interest you more. All right, let's get started. The first step is to organize your week diligently. I'm sure you've had days where you had no plans and you got task after task throughout the day, all unexpected, but you took care of the, all of them like a pure badass. Let me tell you that these kind of days are one-off and not sustainable on the long run. You're much more likely to be productive on the long run if you know exactly what you will be working on and for how long. So make a habit of organizing your week. Spend 30 minutes every Sunday to organize the week ahead. You don't need anything fancy, just a simple calendar will do. Once you have a rough outline for the week, spend 10 to 15 minutes at the end of each day to fine tune the next day. This will give structure and priority to your day. You will wake up with a go-getter mindset and you'll have a strong game plan on how you want to tackle your day. Of course, things come up sometimes and you'll have to adapt, but that's okay. But being consistent with organizing and prioritizing your time is the first step in being productive. And one of the main things you want to do when building your calendar is to create blocks of focused time, which takes me to the next tip. Tip number two is work in short bursts. Start time blocking small chunks. This technique is commonly called the Pomodoro technique. If you have four hours of focus time blocked off in your calendar and all you do is code for the sake of coding while one of your eyes is on Facebook, the other one is on YouTube, you won't get much done. Instead, the idea is to use your time in short bursts of 30 minute intervals. You work for 25 minutes and then take a break for five minutes. Keep repeating that until the four hours are up. The key here is that you will need to eliminate all forms of interruptions for the 25 minute focused part. And then for the five minute break, you can choose whatever you want. There are two kinds of interruptions, ones that you control and ones that others control. The ones that you control are things like email, social media, notifications, etc. During your focus time, turn all of those off. And during your five minute break, you can check social media, respond to a few emails, or just do some stretches if you like. For interruptions that others control, like people trying to chat with you or walking up to your office, trying to block off time on your calendar, wear headphones or let your team know that you work in blocks of focus time. It takes discipline and practice to nail this habit, but once you do, you will be surprised at how good it is at training you to switch on your focused mode. If you want a more thorough explanation on Pomodoro technique, I have an entire video dedicated just for that. Feel free to check it out after this video. I'll put the link in the description below. Tip number three, maintain a backlog. Whether your team has a good task management system or not, you should have one. Break all your tasks into small chunks and put them in your backlog. This does not have to be just for coding. For example, instead of clean the house, have tasks that are vacuum the house, clean the dishes, mow the lawn, so on and so forth. That way, the moment you have some spare time, you can quickly knock off a task that fits within your spare time without having to think about what to do or worse, just not do anything. Tip number four, offload any unwanted cognitive load. Having to remember things you need to do, like commands, syntaxes, all of these puts a cognitive load on your brain, but there is no reason to. There are apps that will do that for you. Have a highly organized note-taking app like Notion or OneNote or whatever else you prefer and make that your brain dump. Throw in anything you may need later without just relying on your memory. If it's a command you use frequently, the repetition of looking it up will take care of the remembering part to a point where you won't need it anymore. If it's an idea or a project, design, jot it down instead of trying to recall it at bedtime or in the shower. If it's something simple that you need to remember later, just use a reminder app. Here's a simple rule to follow. 
If something takes you less than two minutes to do, do it right away because the overhead of creating a reminder or jotting it down isn't worth it. If it takes longer, then jot it down, set a reminder and forget about it. Let the app do the job. If you want to build these kind of keystone habits that are the foundation to you being productive in anything specific, like coding, for example, I can highly recommend three books. First, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Second, Power of Habits by Charles Duhigg. And the third is The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey. Links to these books will be in the description below. However, if you're a visual learner, I highly recommend trying out some classes on Skillshare who have also kindly sponsored this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They offer thousands of inspiring classes for lifelong learners on a variety of topics, including web development, design, freelancing, music, communication, to just name a few. There are classes for every skill level, whether you are a beginner or a pro. And one of the best things about classes on Skillshare is that they have no ads and they are just under 60 minutes in length, so it's easy to fit them in your schedule even if you are a busy person. Speaking of being a productive software engineer, I highly recommend the class Tools and Tips to Optimize Your Workflow as a Developer by Christian Heilman. Christian is a Principal Program Manager at Microsoft. I've worked with him for a few years on the same team and I can attest to his knowledge. In this class, he teaches about things like common mistakes to avoid as a developer, optimal way to set up your environment, version control, and online collaboration, just to name a few. And if you're interested in productivity in general, you can also check out some excellent classes offered by productivity gurus like Thomas Frank and Ali Abda, namely How to Build Habits That Last by Thomas Frank and the Productivity Masterclass by Ali Abda. So if you're interested in developing your curiosity and growth mindset, head over to Skillshare. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link below will get a free trial of the premium membership so that you not only get a head start on being more productive, but you also explore your creativity and start your own learning journey. Okay, so the next set of tips are on the technical side. Tip number five, learn your environment and automate actively. As a software engineer, you use a lot of tools to get your job done. Learn those tools, especially an IDE. Use an IDE or a code editor that works well for your projects, something like VS Code, so you don't have to learn a bunch of them all the time. Stop using the GUI or your mouse. Learn shortcuts, they're much faster. Learning something as simple as Control K C for commenting and uncommenting can save you a bunch of time over the course of your career. If there isn't a shortcut or a macro for something you do frequently, create one. And make sure you save all your settings so you can import them in a new setup. Most IDs and editors already have Cloud Sync these days, so make sure that is enabled. For repetitive tasks, automate them. You are a software engineer. The last thing you want to do is repeat manual steps. If you have to do something more than twice, automate it. If you have a team that does similar things, share your scripts with others so they can benefit as well. Or ask others if they've created automations that you can use. Follow the same practice for setting up new environments. Think of it. How many times have you had to set up your development machine from scratch? How many times do you still choose to install every software tool and package one at a time, wasting an entire day or more on setting up your machine? Automate that stuff and create a script that does that for you. You can use things like Chocolatey for Windows and Homebrew for Mac to make that happen. If you're a new software engineer, you'll also learn a thing or two creating those scripts. Once again, the same idea applies to test environments for your project. If you need a server, database, some tools installed every time you need to test your project, create an image and use something like Docker to create a test sandbox that you can execute. The mantra here is to automate, automate, and automate. And when you're done, automate even more so that you spend less time on meaningless repeated tasks and more time on solving actual problems. Tip number six is follow test-driven development where applicable. I've said this in multiple videos, don't let tests be an afterthought. Learn about TDD. Start by writing tests, then design the implementation to make your tests pass. We always think of tests as simply tools to avoid bugs. But what you don't realize is that well-written tests mock the object and classes that you have created. And if any part of your code is unmockable, like it has hidden dependencies, concrete classes that have to be instantiated within your tests, it is likely a bad design. Tests can force you to think harder about your design and do it well from the get-go instead of spending weeks or even months designing something only to realize that your structure and dependencies are so much like spaghetti that you either need to refactor a bunch of it or just skip the test cases because your code isn't very testable. In either case, you'll waste a bunch of time in the long run. So do it once, do it right. These are the tips I have for today, but being productive isn't about just following a few rules or copying what a book says to the team. Being productive is a mindset. 
You can always have days where all the organization and planning goes out of the window and you'll have to adapt and handle things as they come. But once you're done, you learn, improve, and adjust your methods to account for and adapt to your circumstances so that your estimates are better in the future. This is the mindset that you need to build to eventually be autonomously effective and efficient, where you won't have to put much thought into the principles you're following or the habits you're building. Productivity will be your lifestyle. Well, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments below some cool tips that have helped you become a more productive software engineer. Like always, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And for more content like this, please consider subscribing. If you want to reach out to me personally, hit me up on Instagram at Engineering with Utsa, where I also do a lot of random tech giveaways. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. <laughs>